Happy Wednesday to the <laughs> Wednesday guys. And uh, we just are grateful for Tyrone for the many years that he has been the head of this ship, the men's group, and uh, all of your team. We want to thank the musicians all for helping to create the atmosphere here for everybody who has come before me and all of you who were here for early preparing the place and we were here yesterday and all the days before preparing the place. Whatever you've done, it was it has been that that has helped create a special spiritual atmosphere here of love, through which a wonderful message will come through me. On Tuesdays, between January and October, I facilitated a morning, Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock, <coughs> workshop on this stuff. We closed it at the end of October. The last two Tuesdays in October, my topic was spiritual healing. And I was inspired to focus on, for myself and for the group, a working definition of truly what is spiritual healing. Now we have talked all year long and years before about different methods and kinds of healing, but we were focusing on Neville's teachings and concluded the last two or three weeks Goldsmith spirit sort of moved in there to get some attention. And that's what we closed it off with. My reaching to Goldsmith to help clarify the difference because I was feeling the difference, but I couldn't articulate it as clearly as I wanted to before group. So I thought it was just going to be that next to the last Tuesday that would be the Close, but there was a lot of dialogue at the end of the workshop. And a couple of people, especially one person, was a very seasoned uh, person or student in our teaching for many years, and she's out of our guidance, I believe. And um, she kept asking questions about really a new way of hearing the meaning of spiritual healing. It didn't, it didn't gel with what she already knew in practice. So we kept, so the next week I said, okay, this is spiritual healing part two. <laughs> I wanted to make sure, I, it was clear in my mind, and it was clear in some of the minds of the others I could see, but still it wasn't as clear as I would want to leave them. And I, they all said that they were very satisfied, but between then and now, I'm still, I still wasn't as satisfied that they got it as clear as I would want them to get it. So I'm going to use you. Mm. <laughs> well, you know, clean up. Laugh. I want to see if you can get this as clearly as I want to convey it, and that is what true spiritual healing is. And you will have to understand this in contrast to, in contrast to perhaps ways that you are already using and practicing. And when you leave here, please do not think that I want you to think that there's anything wrong with any method that you are presently using, okay? There's no need to change anything, any concept, any practice at all. I'm just preparing you for those times in life when you might run into the, this kind that whatever you're using is not working, is not working fast enough. Ah, you see what I'm saying? Now, didn't I say there's nothing wrong with anything that you're using the way you're practicing? I said that. 
I said, there comes a time in life, and you know it. You have to go for something a little different, and that's all I'm talking about. It's spiritual healing. Spiritual healing does not fit into the same skin. You can't put old wine in new skins. You, it's just not going to fit anything that you're already practicing though, if it's not this. So you can't ask a question to understand it so you can fit it in the old skin. I don't have the answer for that. Mm. <laughs> now you have many methods of healing. You have natural, you have medicine, you have mental, emotional, nutrition, uh, laying on of hands, and even in new thoughts you got uh, Christian science and unity and divine science. You got all kinds of stuff out there. Am I right? Well, this is none of those. It doesn't fit into any of those. And there's nothing wrong with any of those. Now, I struggled in the last week to get the message today to speak for the third time on this. To the point that I called Rena, she's the videographer there, and she works on our website. All of our stuff is posted on reverendamon.com. I said, uh, Rena, I'm going to change my topic because I had sent it on Facebook and other places, the topic for today. I said, I'm not going to work on that. I, I'm not feeling it. I didn't have it together again. Mm -hmm. So I told her what my topic would be. And then, as spirit would have it, it wouldn't let me go. And suddenly, Dr. Clara, one word came up for me that clarified. Just dropped in my spirit. One word came to me that just made it so clear. Mm -hmm. And when it came to me, so did you. <laughs> so did you, in this sense. When I think of you, and when I met you, what I sensed was <coughs> the word key. What I sensed when I met you is that you were a peculiar person. Now, peculiar means odd. <laughs> peculiar means strange. Peculiar means different. Peculiar means all that stuff. But you know what? Takes one to know one. <laughs> You see in others what you see in yourself. That's what spirit does. It's a peculiar. In order for this method of healing to work, you can't be normal. <laughs> this is not for normal people. This is for not for people who this is not for people who got to do it this way, you got to see it, that way, you got to do it, all that mess. No, he didn't say this. No, he didn't uh, 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 uh. Yeah. You got to be peculiar. You know what? We're right here, he says. I don't make this up. Deuteronomy 14, 2. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord, thy God. And the Lord has chosen you to be a what? Peculiar people unto himself. Then Isaiah 28, 21. For the Lord will rise up as he did at Mount Perizim. He will rouse himself as he did in the valley of Gideon to accomplish his work, his peculiar work, Reverend. His peculiar work to perform his task, his strange task. 
you see, you were raised, taught the Lord works in mysterious ways. Well, that's in peculiar ways. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 41 and 10, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will stand with you. Surely, I will help you. You see, in order for this method of work, of prayer to work, you must have a peculiar relationship with God, a peculiar relationship with the Holy Spirit, simply because his, he works in peculiar ways. Peculiar ways. Lean back to that whole understanding. If you don't just you don't understand how this healing is going to come. You don't understand how this money situation is going to work out. You don't understand how this impasse in the relationship is going to. You don't you don't, you don't know why this is happening in your life. If you are peculiar, isn't it peculiar that somebody just jumped up and started acting a fool in your life out of nowhere? <laughs> But do you see it as a problem? Or do you see it as something changing, something shifting, and it's all good? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Isaiah 55. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. <coughs> Either you're peculiar or not. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. So are and my words that goes forth out of my mouth. It will not return to the empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose to which I send it. Mm. Your pass out says this. Michelangelo said, I saw an angel in the marble and carved until I set him free. The little boy was standing in front of Michelangelo and saw the statue of David and he said, how did you know that was in there? He said, I saw an angel in the marble and I carved until I set him free, which is the story of spiritual healing, spiritual demonstration, <laughs> spiritual fight. Yeah. That's it right there. See, like you say, brother, I saw a parable in the quote. Uh -huh. You know why? Because I'm just peculiar. Because <laughs> 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 I'm peculiar. If you've got a peculiar mind, you see peculiar things. Mm -hmm. If you have a peculiar relationship, then he works with you in peculiar ways. Okay. okay. Numbers 12.6 that the brother read. The Lord will make, I the Lord will make myself known unto you in a vision. And will speak unto you in a dream. Mm. So the Lord, through my angel's mind, revealed something in the marble. Michelangelo caught the vision and received it through his imagination. Who is Michelangelo? You. God has, you have, you have caught the vision, perceived it and received it in your imagination, and it, that, that vision, that imagination, which is God speaking in your mind, saying that, you were healed? Yes. That's the angel in the mark. Yes. It's already done? That's the angel in the mark. mark. It's already finished? That's the way what's finished? The money, the house, the car, the relationship, the, the, the divorce, the marriage. Or what? It's already in what is the marble. That's the angel that's in the marble. What is the marble? It's your consciousness. Yes. 
The marvel is your consciousness. This is everywhere present and everywhere equally present. This divine intelligence that is all around you and everything that all your stuff is in it. <laughs> Waiting to be what? Carved out. You got to carve it out. You got to chip away, chip away, chip away. It's in there. It is not coming from nowhere. Anywhere. <laughs> Erase that word from. That's what you use when you're using those other methods of prayer. But if you're going to use spiritual prayer, nothing is coming from nowhere. It's coming out of. <laughs> it's coming out of the marble. From is separation. Right from the root. Out of is coming from out of my consciousness. I am the creator of it. Through my I am power. God has shown it to me. He said, well, let I me mean, read that. You missed something Amen. on the floor. Michelangelo, would you look at it again? What are the two, two first words? I saw. I saw. I saw. Uh -huh. I saw. If you're working on a healing, I saw. Uh -huh. If you're working on more money, I saw. Uh -huh. If you're working on marriage, if you're working on divorce, if you're working on whatever it is, I saw. It's it's due. It's in the marble. I saw. Amen. I caught the vision. It's in my imagination. Yeah. Now I'm going to carve, carve, carve every day and every way. I am getting better and better. That's carving. Am I right? Yeah. Every day and every way, I am getting better and better. I'm not paying any attention to anything that is around yeah. me. Oh, no. Carve. Breathe. Carve. Carve. This is a teaching in the law of cause and effect. Okay, so you have primary causation and secondary causation. Uh -huh. Now all of this stuff we practice in middle teaching and everything else. But I'm gonna fast pass this because you already know that. I'm not gonna sit here and talk about primary causation and secondary causation and all that. You already know that. It means that something out here is causing something, and in your prayer life you're gonna change what's causing it. So see, there's nothing wrong with that. But when I was a child, <laughs> I see I'm, I'm, I'm 72. My next birthday is 73. Amen. I don't have too much time. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm through playing school and teaching and all that stuff. You know, playing church. I'm staying right here from here on out, Reverend in the spiritual demonstration, the spiritual healing, the spiritual manifestation. There's nothing wrong with any of that, but my time is getting short. Amen. So what we want to do here is do a self-diagnosis here to make sure that take a look at the way you're praying, take a look at the way you look at the way you're thinking, and you might realize through this self-diagnostic that the way you're thinking and praying and believing is reinforcing the problem mm -hmm. and holding it in place. Yeah. Yes. Why? Because of the cause that you're working from. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because of the cause. It's what you're praying on and you're getting what you're praying on and you're getting what you're praying for and you're getting what you're trying to pray to remove. Mm -hmm. And all you're doing is reinforcing it. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you're giving it reality. Yeah. You're making it real. One way to get away from that mess is to take a break, take a break. and come over here uh -huh. and deal with spiritual cause yeah. instead of mental cause and all this cause and all this cause and all those causes. Spiritual cause. Yeah. You see, when you're working from spiritual cause, you're working from resolution and solution and answer. We've got nothing Amen. to do with what you think caused. Amen. You're working from resolution, you're working from solution, you're working from answer. I went to Kaiser uh, website, and you go into your medical 
files and records and I was just going through. And I couldn't, I don't, I don't have a copy of a summary when I went for a visit about a year ago. But what made me think about looking for it was the summary they gave me the other day. And when they gave me this summary, I said, let me go home and see if I can see the final one of them. I was sick. Because this is saying I'm wet. <laughs> and I want to show these people something. And this one is said a year ago. And you all know about it because I just put all my stuff out here in front of y'all all the time anyway. Most of it. <laughs> I love it. So anyway. Then it said, you remember I told y'all my blood pressure was 164 over 90 something? Mm -hmm. Now that's dead. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it gets time to get your plots and stuff together because next thing you know that high blood pressure leads to what? A heart attack and stroke and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, and the man wanted to put me on medicine before you don't eat right. We'll put you on some medicine. You remember me telling you that? Yeah. And I said, no, give me a little break. Let me come back. And they told me to come back, and we you come back in three days, because this is serious. And so when three days came, I didn't go back. Another week went by, and I said, nah. Oh, he told me to go buy a blood pressure monitor. I never owned one. And when I did go buy one, the night, a couple of nights later when I used it, oh, I jumped up and I went to the emergency room. <laughs> And I, I lived in Long Beach, I went to the one in Downey in the emergency room. It was late at night and the thing was full, people in there. I said, I ain't sitting there, we're not, I'll die sitting here. <laughs> this thing here said 190 over something. Now anybody knows anything about blood pressure, 190 over something, you're yeah. so supposed to be walking. So I drew, I said, I'm going to find a place where it's not busy. So I went way out in Palisburg, is that where we were? I knew it wasn't crowded. <laughs> So I went in and the man um, checked my blood pressure and what was all that. I found out that I wasn't using it. <laughs> but I was dying. I was scared that I just knew I was going to choke out of the But it was Well, what happened was I went back maybe a couple weeks or longer when I went back because I decided to deal with cause. Mm -hmm. Now here's where you have to listen carefully. Because I work on cause, because I was dealing with a highly emotional charge situation in the home with the kid. And um, I went back to try to deal with the cause, because you also have to stop eating chicken and stop eating <laughs> this, stop eating all your good stuff. Yeah. I had to do all of that stuff too. <laughs> along with trying to deal with the emotional thing. And I worked with it because I was working with cause. Now that would be primary cause, that you work on the thing, that's, that's what we're taught. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that because it worked. Mm -hmm. And when I went back, changing cause and doing other prayer, the blood pressure was 130, my norm was 135, was 135 over whatever. Oh boy, if you had just gone one point higher, we would have had to put you on blood pressure medicine. So I dodged the bullet. Right? Right. But here is where I'm making a distinction between that kind of prayer and this kind of prayer. Because between that time, which was months ago, and this time, it kind of went up and down depending upon the agitation and getting mad and all that kind of stuff. Because I didn't finish getting mad. <laughs> you know, about stuff that was going on. And I started working on spiritual healing. And spiritual healing is not dealing with any of those causes, any of those reasons, any of those opinions, Amen. but just coming from love, yes. peace, Amen. 
None of these things move me. I could choose peace instead of this. My meaningless thoughts are showing me a meaningless world. Lean out of, I don't know what anything is for. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, the wisdom to know the difference. Your business is your business. Your yeah, life is my life. I ain't got nothing to do with you. I ain't got nothing to do with you. I'm just going to holler. Come on, man. Spiritual. Yes. None of these things move me. I don't need to get into your business. Guess what happened? The report the other day says, 121 <laughs> over 80s. Wow. Now, perfect is 120 over 80. Right. Am I right? Yes. Do you see spiritual healing is that when you stop dealing with everything that's being presented to you as cause, yeah. there is no cause but God. You're talking about two pops. You're talking about duality. You're praying from a consciousness of duality. You're praying from a consciousness of two powers. There is only one God, one creator, and everything that comes out of that creator is good. So whatever it is that you're experiencing in life, you've got to call it good. Because it ain't good, it's something else. And there is no something else. It's all good. You talk to it. What did you come to bring it came for a reason. It came for a purpose, and you pray from that purpose. You don't pray from the cause of the healing or to heal. You pray from the answer. You pray from the solution. You pray from the resolution. And that is what you get. You pray for what you get. Mm -hmm. Well, your paper says, Mysticism is the study of that which is beyond the physical. Seeing the spiritual cause. That's what this is. Seeing the spiritual cause. The spiritual because behind what is going on in your life is not what you are eating. Finish that sentence. It's not what you are eating. It is what is eating you. You get to the spiritual cause, and it ain't bacon. It ain't pork chops. It's not the malt. It's not the sugar. I saw an angel in the marble and carved until I set him free. The angel is your answer. The angel is your need. The angel is the problem. The angel is not the sickness, but it's the answer to the sickness. It's in the mark. See, Michelangelo received the vision, and vision is God. Vision precedes imagination. Imagination is in vision. Imagination is vision perceived. I, the Lord, will make myself known unto you in a vision and will speak unto you in a dream. So if you have a prayer request, a prayer desire, a need, where do you think that came from? You got to start off with believing and understanding that it came from God is an announce, is a desire of the heart. Is God announcing in your mind that it is time for that thing to be born in your life? You caught it. Yeah. And then you pray from that cause. No other cause. Your cause now is a spiritual idea. And from that spiritual idea, you get spiritual healing. Yes. Amen. Goldsmith said, my oneness with God constitutes my oneness with all spiritual beings and with every spiritual idea or thing. <laughs> so within your oneness with God, you are at one with everything in your life. Amen. The cancer, the AIDS, the lupus, the high blood pressure, yeah. the resentment, 
the broke, busted, disgusted, the loneliness, the grieving, the pining, and the whining. You want with that? It's in your consciousness. Embrace it. Embrace it. It came not to stay. It came to what? To pass. Let it pass. This too shall pass. Let it pass, but it does not pass. It will not pass. It ain't going to pass until you give me the blessings that you brought. Amen. Get the blessing from it. Wrestle with it until you get the blessing. You bless the hell out of it. <laughs> you came to the wrong address. I'm getting some good out of this. I'm growing from, from this. I'm, I'm getting, getting strong from this. I'm getting rich from this. Oh, this is, this is enriched. You didn't came to kill me. You didn't come to get me rich with this. I'm getting a testimony out of this. Amen. I'm getting some knowledge out of this. Absolutely. What you see there is no fear. Am I right? Yeah. No fear. My oneness with God constitutes my oneness with all spiritual being and with every spiritual idea or thing. All right. The desire then, is this on your page? Mm -hmm. yes. Comes out of your mind. It is a finished divine idea. That's your prayer request. Whatever you're praying for, it's coming out of your mind. It's God telling you that this is that that is time to be born or manifest in your life. So you're already with it. Your with child is in the marble. Let, like the angel in the marble, the desire is not coming from somewhere. The desire is coming out of something. Your desire is in your mind as a latent urge, waiting in a dream. Or, it's time for birth, that's when you get ready for it. Birth into your natural consciousness. And that's what this thing called life is. Yes. Into this thing called life. The desire to improve situations, change circumstances, heal conditions, heal the incurable, do the impossible, forgive the unforgivable, make a way out of no way, move mountains, and so on and on, mm -hmm. is written in Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore I say unto you, whatever things you desire when you pray, Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Now that said, that word whatever, do you see that word whatever there? Mm -hmm. That's what's in the marble. In the angel in the marble is whatever, whatsoever. You call it out, you carve it out. Now, 1 Samuel 16, 7 says, the Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at, look at the outward appearance. Yeah. But the Lord looks at the heart. Mm -hmm. People look at the problem. Mm -hmm. People yeah. look at the cause. Mm -hmm. People look at the severity. Mm -hmm. People look at the difficulty. Mm -hmm. People look at the impossibility. Mm -hmm. People look at how big, how long, and all this stuff. And, uh, it's going to kill me. I got six months. People look at the problem. God does not look at the outward appearance. God is checking out your heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No fear. Mm. Why? Because it ain't what, you, what the doctor said it is. It's not what the financier said it is. It's not what the employer is. what you call it. There ain't nothing until you name it. And you name it good. You name it a blessing. So I say here, do not look for the cause of the problem. Look for the cause of the healing. You work from the, what you perceive to be the cause of the healing, and it will be revealed. Here it is right here. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Anybody ever heard that? Yes. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Anybody in here not heard that? I don't know. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man opens that door and invite me in, I bombard myself into your business. God says. If you're happy with it, I'm happy with it. <laughs> But he says, I will come in and suffer. I will come in and communion. I'll come in and talk to you. Yes. So that knock on the door 
is that prayer request. Is that, that I need, I want to be healed of that. That's God knocking at the door telling you that he is ready for you to be healed. Yeah, he, if this power is ready for you to enjoy this new home, enjoy this new car, or to be in a better marriage, or heal the situation with this child, or whatever it is, he is ready for that, not you. If you start off right, start off that way, that's the way it ends up. Behind every desire is the, the divine urge, the inner cause, the spiritual idea that is seeking expression in the form of whatever it is that you're asking for, needing, wanting, or praying. That's God seeking expression in your life as that thing, so you start off with it, not without it. You start off with already having was everything you desire, when you pray believe that you receive it, and you shall have it. You start off with already having it. Am I right? Yes, sir. If you are working with a method that works, use that. If you are working, working on something for a long time and it hasn't made the breakthrough that you are seeking, then I'm just offering another way. And this way very clearly is this. Stop working from cause. The cause is not that child. The cause is not that wife. The cause is not that husband. The cause is not the financial problem. The cause is not the sickness. The cause is not anything that any doctor has ever said. The cause is nothing that is in this world. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. There is no healing for that stuff. Because anything out there is not real. So how can something unreal be healed? Amen. It's an illusion of your mind. Amen. So the cause is in mind. Now that's a trick. That is a trick. If you say the cause is in your mind, guess what you go looking for in your mind? Cause. You go looking in your mind for cause. There is no cause there, because if there was, that cause would be creating something negative, something evil. How can that be? That's an oxymoron. God is the only cause there is. So if God is the only cause there is, then God cannot cause that. Then here's another truth. Well, if God didn't cause it, what caused it? That automatically implies there's another cause. You see how you want to circle? That automatically implies there is another cause. So I'm like, what do we do with this? That's why I was confused. That's why I labored on this and labored on this and labored on this. Well, the one word that wraps it up I started off with it, what is it? Peculiar. You gotta have a peculiar mind. You just gotta be peculiar. And then, in this peculiarity, you stop asking questions. You just stop asking questions. And you start walking with you, <laughs> talking with you. Yeah. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I just thank you. Yeah, Lord, I just praise you. I, I just thank you. Thank you because I'm here. Yeah. This is just going to, I don't know how, when I get to that doctor's office, and when they do this blood pressure this time, it's just going to be on. Well, how do you, I don't know. Do you know I don't know what I did between then and now? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> All I know is when I showed up, I was shocked. <laughs> I'm eating pretty much the same thing. I'm seeing pretty much the same people. But you know what? Something has happened in my soul. Something has happened in my soul. Something has happened in my mind. Things that used to bother me don't bother me no more. 
You know, the chicken don't bother me like it is. <laughs> something has shifted in my consciousness. Something has been moved. Do I go looking for it? No, I'm just all right. Amen. <laughs> And if I could give you examples about other areas of my life and other levels of my life, it all works the same way. I just don't lean onto my own understanding. I just chill. I just relax. I just stay in a praise state of mind. I just act peculiar. I hear things. And I don't tell everybody what I hear. <laughs> I see stuff and I don't know what I'm seeing. You know what I'm saying? I'm just peculiar. Oh, and when I talk to people, I'm just I, I'm just a peculiar person. That's because of my peculiar relationship with God. I don't, I don't, I don't need stuff. 